Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over the stock plugin Pro EQ. Pro EQ is a very powerful 7 band EQ that comes included with the Artist and Pro versions of Studio One. It is not included with Studio One Prime. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look at some of the controls that are available on Pro EQ. So here we are inside the session and I have an instance of Pro EQ open already. When you pull it up, at default, it might look a little different than this because I've changed my default layout. Usually I default the spectrum curve will be something different and high quality may be on or off. Don't let this bother you. We're gonna go over what everything does anyway. So let's start at the top. Show curve all versus current. Current is whenever you're hovering over a band inside the spectrum analyzer here, and I click and manipulate it, you can see that it turns yellow in this area. And when I let go, it turns back to white. That's what current is. If I was gonna switch over to all, it would still show the yellow band here. And if I grab the green band up here, it just shows you which bands are active plus the white line, which shows you how the spectrum is getting manipulated with the active bands. The white line is always visible. To the right you have spectrum, and this is where you can change how the spectrum analyzer on Pro EQ looks and behaves. You can have this set to none and it won't show you what's happening. You also have different options, third octave, FFT, and waterfall. With third octave, Can anyone hear me now? My eyes open to see the light. You get third octave bands within the EQ. FFT, can anyone hear me now? My eyes open to see the light. Goes a little bit more in depth. And then waterfall looks like this. Can anyone hear me now? My eyes open to see the light. It's so waterfall does give you a bit of a history graph as well because it scrolls from the bottom to the top. Moving on, the next button is high quality. And what high quality is, is it actually engages a 2x oversampling for the EQ. This allows for more accurate equalization, although it does use just a little bit more processing power. Moving on, we have the spectrum analyzer screen right here, and it can be manipulated as well. We saw before, I can go in and click and hold any of these bands, and now I'm boosting and cutting my low frequency bands. Then on my mouse or trackpad, because I still have this one engaged, I can use a scrolling action to actually change the Q on this band. Scrolling doesn't work for your low cut and high cut, changing the amount of dB per octave that happens, but it will work for the remaining five bands, low all the way up to high, just not the cuts. Then we move down to the bottom, and this is where the information of the EQ bands is. Let's start with the low end and the low cut. That's down here in the bottom left. This button here for any band is to turn the band on or off. And when it lights up blue, that's when it's on. If it's gray, it's off. For the low cut and the high cut, which is over here on the right, you only get two options that you can do within this frequency band. And that's select the frequency you want to either low cut from or high cut from. And that's where the frequency begins the cut from. And then the other options you have for both the low and high cut is actually changing the slope style or the dB per octave of the slopes. And you have a lot of options from 6 dB per octave all the way up to 48 dB per octave. What does that look like? Well, 6 dB per octave is very gentle in its slope. And if we go all the way up to 48 dB, it's very hard. It's almost like a brick wall, although it's not technically. Like I said before, the same thing goes for the high cut frequency, selects where the cutoff frequency starts, and then you have your different dB per octave. Now let's go over the five in the center. Low frequency, low mid frequency, mid frequency, high mid frequency, and high frequency. Now let's start with the three in the middle, low mid, mid, and high mid. These three are identical, and let's go over the controls that they have. And they're shared with both the low frequency and the high frequency as well, but we'll get to those. So first things first is you have gain. It's the big knob in the center of each of these frequencies. And it really is the amount of boost or cut at your target frequency. This goes all the way up to plus 24 or down to minus 24. 
Then you have the frequency knob, and this is the center point of the EQ bell you're going to create, whether it be a boost or cut. So for the low mid frequency right now, its center point is 500 hertz, and we can verify that up here in the spectrum analyzer. So if I was gonna do a 4 dB boost at 500 hertz, we can see that the center of my boost is at 500 hertz. But what if I only want to do 500 hertz and as little movement to the frequencies around it as well? Well, that's what Q or bandwidth is. This is the shape of the bell and how either wide or tight it is. To make it wider, I actually want a smaller number. And as I go all the way down to its limit of 0.1, I have a very wide bell centered around 500 hertz where if I want a very small Q, I go for a larger number, and it becomes kind of like a notch if I needed to actually cut 500. Now you can see it's a very skinny notch, and it doesn't affect the frequencies too much around 500. As I said before, these controls are identical on the mid-frequency and high-mid-frequency as well. Now let's talk low-frequency and high-frequency. You can see on my low frequency, I still can adjust the Q gain and frequency of this band. But if we look at the high frequency, the Q is grayed out. Our high frequency band is a shelving band currently set at 6 dB. So this one actually locks out the Q control. And it's the same thing for the low frequency as well. If I go with 6 dB on the low frequency, it locks out the Q. But there was other options. I can do a peaking EQ, which is identical to the low, mid, mid, and high mid, as we saw before, or I can change it to a 12 or 24 shelving. When I select a 24 or a 12, I now have the ability to adjust the Q. But what does this actually do? Well, if I make a big boost in my low frequencies, and I look at my Q, which is currently set to 0.7, that's the default, my shelve has a nice even slope all the way down. And when we get to 200 hertz here, it's just a little bit boosted. By the time we get to 300, we're back to no booster cut actually happening. If I was to adjust the Q, this actually turns this more into a resonant style shelving EQ. What that means is when I boost this up, it's actually going to create a little bit of a dip before recovering back to zero. If we go in the opposite direction, it actually adds a little bit of a boost. And the more Q we give, the more dramatic that boost or cut is. We go in the opposite direction again, there we go. And you can see below the frequency, there's actually a peak here as well, where if we put this back to default, it's nice and smooth all the way down. Now, why would you choose to use a resonant style shelving EQ? Well, maybe you're doing your kick drum and your kick drum, you wanna have a nice center of 60 Hertz, but this is affecting 80 Hertz, which is where you want your bass guitar to live. And this is all in theory. I can make this more of a resonant. And if I adjust this, then I can actually create space for my bass guitar to sit because I've already done a resonant boost of 60, which will cut that 80 Hertz and make room for the low end of the bass. All of this is the same for the high frequencies as well. If we change this to a plus 12, give ourselves a nice high shelf and change the Q, it turns into a resonant shelf as well. And last but not least, it down on the bottom right, you have an output meter. You also have a gain adjustment knob plus an auto gain button. The output meter gives you peak and RMS levels, and the auto button will automatically adjust the output level of the EQ post-processing. Here's a cool thing about Pro EQ is it actually does have a sidechain input. Now this doesn't affect what the EQ is doing, but it may help you make better moves. So right now I have this Pro EQ on my lead vocal and maybe it's clashing with my guitars. So I can actually go here to the sidechain and say, you know what? I want my guitar bus to feed the sidechain input. So now what I'm able to do, when I hit play with both the lead vocal and the guitar is soloed. Can anyone hear me now? My eyes open to see the... It shows me on the spectrum analyzer that pink line. The pink line is my side chain input. So now I have a reference of the frequency band of something else on the EQ that I'm manipulating right now. This will help me target any masking frequencies 
either in the vocal or I can go back to my guitar bus and adjust things over there. So you can clearly see that Pro EQ is a powerful little seven band EQ built right into the artist and pro versions of Studio One. The added sidechain inputs so you're able to see the frequency spectrum of other instruments is also a huge tool to be able to find if you're having any issues in related frequency bands. Maybe you could do this on your kick drum and bass guitar to make sure that they are sitting nicely together and that there's room for each one of them to find their own home in the low end. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com, and if you have a question, ask it in the comments, and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.